Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless gen z with the help from the left they've redefined the male heartthrob alpha males they're out and the betas well they're in but there's levels to this lunacy let's break it down starting with the rise of the <clears throat> elf prince an elf prince keeps you guessing are they into girls, boys, both? You may never know. Look at Harry Styles, Timothy Chalamet. They scream elf prints. Now onto the golden retriever man. These types are fun, loving, doting, and eager to please. They're men with golden retriever energy. They have passion for home comforts and they love their mothers. So think Travis Kelsey per se or Ryan Reynolds. Lastly, we have the baby girl man with their soft features. Mushy, a little bit, vulnerable personalities. A baby girl is sweet, charming, and in touch with their feminine side. They are ready to talk about their feelings and even will carry a purse to brunch. Actor Jake, uh, Jacob Elordi has been crowned the ultimate baby girl along with Canadian actor Keanu Reeves. Here with insight into where all the good men have gone, Virginia State Delegate Nick Freitas. Nick, good to see you. I'm, listen, Nick, I'm Jen X. What the heck is going on with women these days wanting these beta boys? Oh, see, I don't think they actually do. In fact, you're seeing more and more go online and ask, where are all the masculine men? It's like, well, when uh, modern feminism decides to compete with masculinity as opposed to being complementary to it, uh, you end up with, with guys like this, but but ultimately they they don't uh, they don't answer the mail. So it is when uh, when it comes to someone they actually want to marry and and have a relationship with and have kids with. Again, I, I go back to this, like a, a good man is someone that wants to protect, wants to provide, and also has the capability and the competence to protect and provide. There is no better example of real manhood than Jesus Christ. Christ's example, as given in the Bible, shows us how to express male traits in a positive way. Jesus was unafraid to show his emotions over the death of Lazarus, as we read in John 11, 35 and 36. Jesus wept then the Jews said, see how he loved him. Jesus was also willing to chase crooks out of the temple with a whip, as we read in John 2, 13 through 16. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, with the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Christ had compassion for others, as we read in Matthew 15, 32, and verses 35 through 37. Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat and I do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitude. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets full of the fragments that were left. Jesus demonstrated forgiveness. Luke 7, 44-48 then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Jesus 
demonstrated humility. John 13, 12 through 17. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Jesus demonstrated bravery, love, and extreme generosity. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Not only did Jesus give his life to save all of mankind, he endured the most horrendous beating beforehand. Jesus gave everything he had to bring humanity back into right relationship with God, which is the most generous gift of all. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Afghanistan says Pakistan's Air Force has conducted airstrikes targeting two of its border provinces and killing at least eight people. Taliban officials say the victims were women and children. They're calling it a violation of Afghan sovereignty. Afghan forces have now carried out retaliatory strikes towards Pakistani territory. We start with news of a fresh display of defiance by Pyongyang, which comes days after a joint military drill by Seoul and Washington and coincides with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to South Korea for the Summit for Democracy. North Korea fired what is presumed to be multiple short-range ballistic missiles toward the EC Monday morning. Seoul's Joint Chiefs of Staff detected several SRBMs at 7.44 a.m. launched toward the EC from the Pyongyang area. Japanese authorities said the missiles reached a maximum altitude of about 50 kilometers. Given this data, experts believe it is likely that the SRBMs were KN-25s, which have allegedly been exported to Russia. South Korea's military strongly condemned North Korea's missile launch as a provocation that seriously threatens peace and stability on the Korean peninsula. The JCS added that it has strengthened surveillance and vigilance in preparation for additional launches and is maintaining a full readiness posture by closely cooperating with U.S. and Japanese authorities. According to Professor Yang Mujin at the University of North Korean Studies, the North's provocation has been timed to correspond with U.S. State Secretary Antony Blinken's arrival in Seoul to attend the summit for democracy. The launch comes over a month after North Korea fired multiple rounds of cruise missiles toward the EC. It's the second ballistic missile launch of the year, with the previous launch coming in January. Experts believe North Korea has remained rather low-key over the past few weeks in terms of threats and provocations, even during Seoul and Washington's Freedom Shield military exercise that wrapped up last week due to important political events in Russia and China. Charred vehicles with shattered windscreens. It's the aftermath of Ukrainian shelling which hit this car park in Belgorod, according to Russian authorities. Residents were left shaken. I live nearby. I heard the blast and ran out to see something burning. I ran up. The neighboring buildings were on fire. In buildings nearby, some windows were blown out by the blast. The sirens went off. My youngest child and I ran into the corridor in the first seconds. The blast started and a missile flew past. Then a bright flash, not very loud. Everything happened very fast. The doors flew open. The windows were thrown out. The Belgorod region has become the frequent target of Ukrainian cross-border attacks, attacks that come in response to Russia's war in Ukraine. These videos released by Russia's defence ministry claim to show what the ministry says are Ukrainian soldiers attempting an incursion into Belgorod. The region is on high alert. 
On Saturday, Russia's Defence Ministry said it had intercepted missiles, drones and rockets over Belgorod and Kursk, another border region. It comes in the midst of Russia's presidential elections, with Putin accusing Ukraine of attempting to, quote, disrupt his bid for another mandate. The president has promised a harsh response. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is pushing back on Senator Chuck Schumer's call for new elections to replace him. President Biden is standing behind Schumer's statements, intensifying the face-off between Israel and the United States. Israel continues to make plans to go into Rafah despite opposition from the United States and the world. CBN's Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. Monday, Israeli forces carried out a raid on El Shifa Hospital, Gaza's largest medical center, because they said it had intelligence that senior Hamas militants were in the complex and arrested 80 people. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Netanyahu is pushing back against U.S. pressure for new leadership. On Sunday, Netanyahu went on multiple U.S. networks to respond to Senator Chuck Schumer and the White House. Let's talk about that criticism, Mr. Prime Minister. Here's Chuck Schumer slamming you on the Senate floor on Thursday. A new election is the only way to allow for a healthy and open decision-making process about the future of Israel. People on all sides of this war are turning away from a two-state solution, including Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. I believe in his heart he has his highest priority is, as, is the security of Israel. However, I also believe Prime Minister Netanyahu has lost his way. Mr. Prime Minister, he says you've got to go. Joe Biden says he liked the speech and also said your policies are hurting Israel more than helping Israel. Your response to Chuck Schumer and the president. I think Schumer's statements are wholly inappropriate. I think we're, we're not a banana republic. The people of Israel will choose when they'll have elections, who they elect, and it's not something that will be foisted upon us. That, you know, it's wrong to try to replace the elected uh, leaders of a sister democracy and a staunch American ally at any time, but especially during the time of war. So, you know, I don't know why President, why uh, uh, Senator Schumer made the, those statements. Uh, I think the only thing that we should be focused on is changing the regime in Gaza, bringing down the terrorist regime of Hamas and not the duly elected government of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's the right policy. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God's foreign policy is pretty simple. If you bless Israel, you will be blessed. If you curse Israel, you will be cursed. Even before Schumer's speech last week, Israel's Channel 14 released a poll showing ongoing U.S. hostility has strengthened Netanyahu over his nearest political rival, Benny Gantz. The Jerusalem Post also reporting that a majority of Israelis support Netanyahu's day after plan for the Gaza Strip when the war with Hamas is over. German Chancellor Olaf Schultz met with Netanyahu on Sunday. He said Germany stands with Israel but like many nations, questions Israel's military operation in Rafah. The longer the war lasts, the higher the number of civilian casualties rises, the more desperate the situation of the people in Gaza become, the more this begs the question, no matter how important the goal, can it justify such terribly high costs? Or are there other ways to achieve on Friday, Israel's security cabinet agreed to a plan to enter Rafah. Egypt and the European Union object to that plan, and National Security Advisor John Kirby says the White House expects assurances of how Israel will take care of Gazans. The Israelis will tell you they've got a plan for that, the evacuation, they call it humanitarian islands, um, and uh, we welcome any credible plan to take care of them, but Have we seen haven't that? seen it yet. We haven't seen it yet.
The U.S. and other nations are calling for more humanitarian aid. CBN News witnessed the transfer of that aid by the IDF at the Karim Shalom crossing into Gaza. Colonel Elad Gorin of the Coordination of Government Activities in the Territories, or COGOT, says the problem is the U.N. is failing to distribute the aid once inside Gaza. Just keep saying more, and it doesn't matter if we will pass 1,000 trucks here and they won't be able to collect it, they will say that there is a humanitarian crisis. From our understanding, there is no humanitarian crisis. There are challenges, there are obstacles, and the, the main gap is the capacity of the UN agencies to deliver and to take responsibility over their own uh, operation. Yet you already hear in our media and from our leadership, renewed calls again for a two-state solution. Uh, what's your view on these calls for a Palestinian state? It's not only my view, it's the uh, view of the vast majority of Israelis who believe that at this time to have a Palestinian state would be basically a formula for uh, creating a, a platform, the greatest reward for terrorism in history, and it would create a platform yeah. for, uh, uh, for attacking Israel. Hamas had a de facto Palestinian state in Gaza. And what did he use it for? To massacre Israelis in the worst savagery uh, that uh, was meted on Jews since the Holocaust. So, you know, we just had a vote in the Knesset the other day. 99 against 9 of the Knesset, our parliament members, voted against the attempt to impose on Israel uh, a, terror, mm. uh, a Palestinian state. When people say, oh, well, you know, this is Netanyahu and his fringe, uh, you know, and fringe elements in his coalition. No, it's not. <laughs> it's the vast majority of the Israeli public that understands that a Palestinian state, the way that is being envisioned, would be an enormous danger to Israel's uh, future. So that's why they're united in resisting this. But when I'm being criticized by various people in the United States as obstructing peace, because of that, well, number one, we're not obstructing peace. We're ensuring that we don't have a catastrophic uh, suicidal move. And second, it's not just me. It's the vast majority of Israelis. So if you want to take up the issue with the vast majority of Israelis, say so. Say you're against the vast majority of the people of Israel. And don't try to uh, personalize it, because it's not a personal thing. I'm leading the policy that most Israelis think is essential for our survival and our future. Keep in mind, the U.S. is insisting on a two-state solution after the war, but Israel has made it clear there is no way it will tolerate a Palestinian state so long as Hamas still has the power to stand. God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2, and Zechariah 12, 8 and 9. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there, on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them, in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. The prophet Zechariah, tells us how the Lord will destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, as we read in Zechariah 14.12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. On other fronts, there have been heavy cross-border exchanges on the Lebanese border, alleged IDF strikes in Syria, and another failed Houthi attempt to target a lot. Israeli airstrikes reportedly targeted at least two sites in Damascus province in Syria, including a weapons depot. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says Israeli missiles targeted a weapons depot belonging to the Syrian military and used by Hezbollah in the Kalamun Mountains. A Syrian soldier was reportedly wounded in the attack. The IDF continues pounding Hezbollah positions in Lebanon. Fighter jets struck a Hezbollah military compound in the area of al khiyam in response to missiles fired toward Akko. IDF fighter jets also struck a Hezbollah observation post in the area of Kafir Kila. The United States military reported on Saturday night that it had intercepted a drone shot by the Houthi rebels over the Red Sea and that another had crashed into the water. 
there are no reports of casualties or damage. A suspected attack by Yemen's Houthi rebels saw an explosive detonate near a ship early Sunday in the Gulf of Aden, potentially marking their latest assault on shipping through the crucial waterway leading to the Red Sea. No damage to the vessel had been reported, and the crew are reportedly safe. Meanwhile, top figures from Hamas and other terrorist factions reportedly held discussions with Yemen's Iran-backed Houthi rebels to plan the next stage of war on Israel. Hamas and the Houthis belong to the Axis of Resistance, a collection of Iran-backed movements hostile to Israel and the United States that also includes Lebanon's Hezbollah terror group and Iraqi militias. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3:4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. We begin with breaking news. A suspect in a multi-state crime spree armed with an AR-15 style rifle, allegedly shooting and killing three family members, including his 13-year-old sister outside Philadelphia. Tonight, dramatic video showing police rescuing hostages from this home in Trenton, New Jersey. A suspect believed to be barricaded inside, considered armed and dangerous after an alleged crime spree across multiple states that left three of his family members dead. Authorities identifying the suspect is 26-year-old Andre Gordon, saying he's believed to be armed with an AR-15 style assault rifle and currently homeless. Gordon's alleged crime spree beginning this morning in Trenton, carjacking Sonia Hansen and her grandson at gunpoint. Hansen still shaken. Guy started banging on my car with the back of the gun, and then I jumped over the seat and ran. I'm so glad I'm just alive because I think could have killed me. Gordon then allegedly traveling to a home in Levittown, Pennsylvania, where he broke in. After which he shot and killed his 52-year-old stepmother, Karen Gordon, and his 13-year-old sister, Kara Gordon who lived at the residence. There were three other individuals at the residence, including a minor inside the home who were able to hide and avoid being shot by Gordon as he went through the house searching for them. Gordon then driving to another home nearby and breaking in, after which he shot and killed 25-year-old Taylor, Taylor Daniel, with whom he has two children. At the time of the shooting, there were four other individuals present inside that home, one of which was injured after being bludgeoned by Gordon with the assault rifle. At 9.13 a.m., police say Gordon carjacked someone at gunpoint at a Dollar General parking lot in Morrisville, driving off in his 2016 dark gray Honda CRV with Pennsylvania registration and a Namaste bumper sticker. Police then finding the abandoned SUV miles away in Trenton. Police swarming that home for hours before apprehending the suspect on a street nearby. Overnight, terror at a spring break hotspot. A series of shootings in about 40 minutes in Jacksonville, Florida, that left three injured and one dead. 80 people were running down the street, watching you drop to his knees. Police saying the shootings happened in the popular beachfront area, where many people were gathered celebrating St. Patrick's Day and enjoying spring break. Adding there were multiple incidents, at least one involving a gang member, and warning. I want you to come to Jacksonville Beach. I want you to live here. I want you to visit. But if you break the law, we're going to put you in jail. 
it's not the only town facing issues as spring break heats up. We got a fight over there. In New Smyrna Beach, Florida, just north of Orlando, a fight escalating. <laughs> and video clearly shows a beachgoer taking out a firearm, prompting Volusia County Sheriff's deputies to draw their weapons on a Drop suspect the they say is 16. Drop the Officers chasing down the teenager before he rushed through crowds of spring breakers and into the ocean. After a five-minute standoff, the team was arrested and later charged. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. One of the many signs that we are living in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Every characteristic listed after men would be lovers of themselves illustrates what men do when they love themselves above God. When you jump down to verse 13, the Bible states, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is very evident that evil is getting worse and deception is off the charts. Godlessness is now taking over all aspects of society. Two people were shot and killed early this morning here in Washington, D.C., and five more taken to the hospital with injuries. Police are on the search for a suspect who fled the scene on foot. A total of seven people were shot at this location, uh, two of which have sin since been pronounced deceased. Uh, the other individuals that were shot at this location, all of which are adults, were transported to local hospitals. Locals and business owners have been pleading city lawmakers to find solutions after a violent 2023. Homicides rose by 35 percent, while overall violent crime increased by 39 percent in the nation's capital. The intense manhunt for a suspect in the fatal shooting of a New Mexico state trooper now over. Jeremy Smith in custody after being shot and wounded during a shootout with police. He's also a person of interest in the death of a South Carolina paramedic. The chilling new details coming in tonight about Smith's capture. Tonight, the urgent manhunt for a murder suspect ending in a dramatic shootout. Authorities capturing the man wanted in two cross-country killings of a police officer and paramedic, all because of the careful eye of a gas station clerk who asked us not to show her face. He bought his pack of full cigarettes. When I carted him, I seen his ID. It was from South Carolina. The spelling of his name, I knew who he was. Police tell us after Jeremy Smith was spotted at that gas station a mile away from here, he was then caught running towards these homes. That's when officers began shooting at him and then took him into custody. Shots were fired. Some shots strike Smith. We don't know the amount right now or how many. Police say Smith is a person of interest in the death of 52-year-old Fenicia Machado IV, a South Carolina paramedic reported missing Thursday Police say Smith stole Machado Ford's white BMW and drove 1,500 miles across the country to Quay County, New Mexico, where he got a flat tire on I-40 early Friday. 35-year-old New Mexico State Police Officer Justin Hare, a five-year veteran of the force, was dispatched to help. Smith shooting Hare twice, stealing his patrol car with Hare still inside, police say, and later abandoning it and the injured officer on the side of the road. He offered help to a person he thought was in need. That person killed him in cold blood. A family spokesperson tells ABC News Hare leaves behind two young daughters and his girlfriend, who is pregnant with their third child. There's no little girls. No little girl should grow up without a father. With the horrible school shootings taking place in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse? as the time of Christ's return draws near. If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is, God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel vs. Vital. The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963, Abington School District, First Shemp. The removal of Bible reading in public schools 
by the Supreme Court, 1973, Roe v. Wade legalized abortions by the Supreme Court. Although Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court on June 24, 2022, there have been over 60 million abortions in the United States. 2013, United States v. Windsor. The Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act. Doma stated that one man should be married to one woman. Doma is biblically supported according to Genesis 2.24, which says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 2015, Overfell v. Hodges, the Supreme Court case that ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. America has made it legal to murder unborn children and has legalized homosexuality in the form of God's sacred institution, marriage. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. We're going to turn now to some scary scenes in Iceland over the weekend after a volcanic eruption sent smoke and fiery ash into the sky. Hundreds were forced to evacuate, including Americans at a popular tourist spot because officials have declared a state of emergency there. Sirens blared at Iceland's world-famous Blue Lagoon Resort on Saturday night as a volcanic eruption forced hundreds of people to race to safety. We're evacuating. All right. The lava's coming. Officials also urged folks in the nearby town of Grindavik to leave their homes as fountains of molten rock burst from the ground. Lava flows slowed Sunday. Man-made barriers appeared to help keep the lava from engulfing the fishing town, but parts of the asphalt were still smoldering. I've never experienced anything like that before. Tourist Melissa Ezer says she had just sat down for dinner with her husband when they suddenly heard a siren. We heard the, the sound go off, and that's when my husband and I looked at each other, and they said, okay, evacuation in route. Iceland is a hot spot for volcanic activity. Officials say this fourth eruption in the country southwest since December was the most powerful. So far, no injuries have been reported. The seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world, and the news headlines prove it. God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, last day signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns us that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation seems to include a massive volcanic eruption as we read in Revelation 8.8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. The aftermath of those deadly tornadoes in the heartland, the storms killed three, injured dozens, and just shattered communities in seven states. This morning, the sound of chainsaws, winches, and trash removal echoing throughout Lakeview, Ohio. Hundreds of families here and in surrounding Logan County are trying to get back on their feet in the wake of a tornado that killed three. Travis Goss survived the storm huddled with his family in the center of their home. Now, like many, he's trying to salvage what's left. I don't know. I don't even know where to begin with my cleanup. Uh, I see people picking up out of the yards, but with mine, where do you start? Yeah. The cleanup effort here well underway, but for so many of the homes along the street, it is a total loss. Across town, this high school gym now serving as a donation center giving out food, clothing, and supplies to anyone in need. That's where we met Ashley DeVore. She tells us she's never experienced destruction like this. I lost everything in my house, um, all my food. I have my house, so that's, that's a good thing. I've been here since I was 17. I've never seen a tornado come through. Among the dead, 70-year-old grandmother Darla Williams. Her family telling ABC News that she was a true friend to all that knew her. At least 15 tornadoes rampaged across seven states on Thursday, leaving trails of destruction in their wake. Other parts of the country also experiencing severe weather, with a heavy hailstorm in Texas forcing people to run for cover. In Needville, fist-sized chunks of hail punching holes in windows and garbage cans. I was worried that it was going to come through the roof, like that's how loud it was. Sadly, this is how it's going to be now. It's just going to be one disaster 
after another, and most people will have absolutely no idea why any of this is happening. We are living in very troubled times, and people need hope. We read about that hope in John 3.16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We also read about those who do not believe in Jesus, are condemned, and love darkness rather than light, in John 3.18-20. through 20. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to call upon the name of Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.